Hello everybody, I'm Bo Chevesu. This is my daughter Lucy. Today we are coming to you with some pros and cons, some hints, tips, tricks, my own humble opinion on the Luna sandals. These specifically are the Osos, O-C-O. -O. Uh, I just got back from West Africa, Sierra Leone, and I was walking around the jungles there. I'm basically doing what I do for a living, which is nonprofit film uh, for other nonprofits. Uh, so churches, charities, ministries, people doing awesome things in adverse situations, that's what I'm doing. And I have to pack very lightly because I have a lot of camera gear with me. These, I specifically searched around the entire internet trying to find the most minimalist, lightweight sandal possible. And I am pleased to say that I found them. Uh, now. I am coming from the background of Chacos. I absolutely love my Chacos. So uh, it took a lot to break my addiction of these things. And, and they're not bad sandals. Chacos are really, really tough. And they used to last longer uh, until they sold out to another company. Um, the, the tread kind of comes apart, but that's a whole nother video review in and of itself. Uh, but the thing that the big takeaway from my Chacos is they're big, they're bulky, uh, they're tough. Um, but they're basically half of a hiking boot. And, and I can't afford half of a hiking boot as I am packing and as I am, I am traveling around and, and I, it needs to be lightweight and compact. These uh, fit very, very nicely inside my duffel bag. And as you can see, after two weeks of walking around with these things, you see the slight curve in them. They have conformed slightly to my foot. Um, so uh, they're, they, in that regard, I do like that. Um, however, there's not a lot of support. So if you're someone who has orthotics or needs those, now I'm not a, a, a pediatrician, no, not a pediatrician, uh, a foot doctor basically, um, then I, I probably wouldn't suggest getting Luna sandals because there's not a lot of support in them. They're basically uh, slabs of plastic uh, on the bottom of your feet. And that's one of the cons is they're rather expensive um, now, granted, these aren't flip-flops that you're just going to get at, at Walmart for $10. These will last you for many, many, many trips and eventually pay themselves off. But if you're like me and you're a cheapskate, you're kind of rubbing the back of your neck thinking 100 bucks for small little flip-flops or sandals, not flip-flops. Um, I wasn't quite sure, really wasn't too sold on the price. Uh, however, once I pulled the trigger and actually got them, they, it made sense as to why they do charge that much because it takes a lot to wear them out. Um, so the bottom of these Osos, extremely grippy. Uh, I went uphill a quarter of a mile five times in the snow. No, no, I'm just be exaggerating. But seriously, we woke up at four in the morning to carry water with these things. Hello everybody, it's me, Bo Chevesu. We are in a small little country called Sierra Leone. Uh, think of the recent news of the Ebola outbreak and they, they, they live a pretty hard life here. It is 4.30 in the morning and I've got these sandals on and these are helping me uh, carry approximately 70 to 80 pounds of water. And as you can see here, we have to go all the way up a hill with these things and testing these sandals in the most adverse of conditions. You will notice that we have a nice combination of rough and slippery and they are not moving anywhere. Uh, so as you can see, they stay put. Uh, this little red mark right here, I've actually been testing these side by side with my Chacos. And that red abrasion mark is from my Chacos. Not to say they're bad people, but I would prefer these because there's far, far less rubbing on these things. Uh, they're easy to take on and off, but once they are on, they're not going anywhere. You'll see the bottom is a nice, nice grippy type surface. Very difficult to slide on this slick cement. And so far, it's a five out of five stars. Uh, initially, I had reservations because they're kind of expensive just for a pair of flip-flops, but they will pay themselves off in the long run, especially if you are a world traveler and you're doing crazy things like fetching water at four in the morning in Sierra Leone. And um, they worked very, very well. Uh, slippery, clay-like um, atmosphere. The trail was really, really awful and yet these held up wonderfully. Now I did test these uh, without the ankle strap. 
and you'll notice that there's an additional strap right here. I would suggest spending the extra 10 or 15 seconds when you're putting these on in the morning to put this ankle strap on right here. If you don't, um, eventually your heel will slip out if you are walking around a lot, um, especially if you're hiking or backpacking use that included ankle strap to really lock your heel down. And that brings up another con with these things is you, they're not necessarily easy to slip on. They do take uh, a bit of patience to put on, especially the first few times. Uh, and I imagine that that would probably weed out a lot of people out there because they want something, they're used to flip-flops where you wake up in the morning, you slip them on and you go. Um, but these take a bit of adjusting to put on uh, so, you know, in that way, it's a con because it takes a while to put on. However, once they're on, they stay put. So it, it's kind of a trade-off there. If you're looking for something just to slip on and get the morning newspaper, you're probably going to just want some flip-flops, something cheap from Walmart. But if you are looking to wear these all day long, as I did, then you're going to want to make sure that they're secure and you're going to spend the extra 30 to 60 seconds making sure that they are secure. Lastly, in regards to sizing, if you're like me, you spent a lot of time on the website trying to figure out the sizing of these things, I typically wear a 12 and a half. I was really surprised to get a 12. I have never gotten a size 12 before in my entire life. However, um, these are not like your typical shoes. They, they want you to come uh, within a half an inch of the front right here. And I'm used to wearing my Chacos where there's quite a bit of bumper in front. Um, but they, it's Those supposed to be, yeah, no, these are mine. They're not mama's. I did get mama some too. Uh, but uh, just keep in mind with the sizing, it is accurate if you print off the templates uh, online. And I printed off sizes 11 to 13, tried them all on, and I actually went into the store to make sure that the templates online were accurate. And yes, they are accurate. So again, I got, I usually wear a 12 and a half. I went with a 12 and they work absolutely perfectly. Uh, so that's my own humble opinion. You may not have to go a size down. It may be dead on for you. Just go by the template online and you'll be very happy with these. Overall, extremely impressed with them. They're minimalist, they're lightweight, they're compact, they're easy to pack, they're comfortable, they stay secure. Last thing, I am not a paid employee of Luna. I do know them personally. They're very nice, wonderful people. Um, but yes, this is my own humble opinion on these Luna Osos. And uh, I hope that this is helpful in determining whether or not these are the right footwear for you. My name is Bo Shevasu, and this is Lucy. And we look forward to demonstrating, reviewing, and testing more fantastic things.